Hello, welcome again to Benchwarmers. More college football this week as we look ahead to the Missouri Valley Conference season, especially here at Midco Sports Talk in the University of South Dakota Coyotes football this week with Jay Elson and John Thayer. I am not emotionally ready for football yet. Yet. A couple more weeks, maybe, once we get into it. It's taking you so much time. Let's go. All right. I mean, I'm ready. Let's tomorrow. September 3rd is the opener for the Coyotes at Kansas State. And we'll yeah. talk about the upcoming schedule here in a minute. But let's go back to 2021. A little year in review for the Coyotes. They go 7-5. and five. Uh, A playoff loss. Made the FCS playoffs. Lost to uh, Southern Illinois. But just a little video recap here of how the season went. Uh, wins at home against Northern Arizona and Cal Poly. At Cal Poly to get it started. And what was uh, some thoughts on the regular season for the Coyotes? Well, I think when you look at, at USD schedule last year, obviously it was an up and down season, right? They went out and, and uh, really handed it to Cal Poly and you felt good about that. Lost a really tough one on the road at Missouri State, a game I think they felt like they, they could have won and maybe should have won. Uh, obviously the highlight of the season was the Hail Mary against South Dakota State. It's tough to, to uh, not have that as your highlight. Um, but then you had a quarterback injured and you know you had that loss to Illinois State and, and some of that stuff that happened in this roller coaster of a season but at the end made the playoffs and that's obviously been their goal so a lot of ups ups and downs uh, but some real high points absolutely some very very high points as a matter of fact and and I think they they took some people by surprise a little bit I think those of us who who cover the team uh, on a regular basis understood the, the level of talent or the influx of talent that was coming to Vermillion and and the fact that this roster had a better shape to it than than some in, uh, have in previous years, but but I think one of the keys to their year, John, while it was up and down, and they maybe had a couple that that they let get away, if you're going to be successful in the Missouri Valley Football Conference, you've got to find a way to win on the road, and they did that twice at UNI, a place that we all know is extremely difficult to do, and then they won one they should win on the road at Western Illinois as well, and so while they did have the slip up against Illinois State at home and the game that got away at Missouri State, they countered that uh, with those wins on the road against Northern Iowa and Western Illinois. And so th- that was a big part of their thing. They haven't had a lot of success at the Division One level in road games. Yep. And so to get two big ones last year in league play, I think, was a big reason for their success and their return to the FCS playoffs. Well, and that win on the road at Western Illinois was important because that was the first game out, out of the entry that, that Carson Camp was back. So right. how was he going to respond from that injury? And I think that that was an important yeah. game. Talk about uh, the offense here coming up in a little bit as well. But let's look at 2022 for the Coyotes. And as we mentioned, September 3rd at Kansas State. The first five games are going to be brutal in this schedule. You go to Montana after Kansas State, home against Cal Poly and North Dakota State, and then at SDSU in the first five games. Going to be wicked hard early early (laughs) on for the Coyotes. I'm not sure who deserves the credit or the blame, whichever way you (laughs) want to look at this. But, man. Somebody uh, did do absolutely no favors here. And, and now, on the one hand, you look at it and you've got to give them a lot of credit. You're saying, hey, we're going to challenge ourselves. We're not going to roll through a bunch of cupcake games. Montana, never that if you're going to go play them. But a Montana team that's picked first to the big sky, both the coaches and the media poll this fall, which we learned earlier this week, um, that certainly uh, goes to show you exactly what the Grizz are working with. Obviously, Cal Poly is a must win in that five game stretch. And then you look at NDSU and SDSU to start league play, and you're thinking, hey, we got to try and figure out how to get one of those. If you can get through that stretch with a minimum record of two and three, you're setting yourself up for a potential successful second half of the season. And I think that'll be important because the last thing is, as we all know, morale gets rolling one way or another real quick. If, you, if things go well, Suddenly confidence is soaring and, and things are looking really good and it feels like you can do no wrong, but it goes the other way as well. You lose a couple, especially ones where you feel like maybe you shouldn't lose or maybe just heartbreaking type games, and suddenly that confidence is tough to get back once it's gone. Yeah, we'll learn a lot about this team very early in the season, obviously. You go to a Big 12 team. Even that game against Cal Poly, we're talking about it as a must win. This is a team that's going to be better than they were last year. They showed up out at San Luis Obispo to find out that the starting quarterback wasn't going to play in that game. And um, obviously, USD took care of things on the ground and really controlled that football game. But uh, they'll be ready to go. You just like that that one is in in your building and then playing – uh, three of the top, uh, you know, FCS teams in the country, three teams that, that have a chance to, to contend for a national championship. 
uh, you're going to learn a lot about your football team real quick. This could be a team that plays extremely well and is one and four or two yeah. and three, and you just have to take the goods from that and and uh, figure out you know how you can manage the rest of the schedule. What's the silver lining there? The silver lining is you can start that way in the valley and recover and still make the playoffs. That's sure. that now that's that's looking on the bright side. Let's be honest. Nobody wants to start that way, but you can recover from that if you finish four and four. By the end, you're going to be in the conversation. If you manage five and three, you're in most years. Yeah. Most years. Home games in the second half of the season, Southern Illinois, Missouri State, UNI, not easy by any means, but as daunting as it is every year in the Valley, can you see seven or eight wins in there out of the 11 games? Yeah, I think the benefit is when you talk about those games, those are all top 25 preseason teams, right? Yeah. But you get them at home where yeah. you historically play a lot better. You talked about the uh, road struggles at Division One. Well, you get these games at home, you're going to have to go win some on the road, places yeah. that you haven't always played well either. But it's going to be a challenge. I think early on playing games against North Dakota State, South Dakota State, Montana, and then – at Illinois State, you have a chance to, even if you're not quite winning some of those games, to build some of the confidence. They're going to need confidence as a group to go through the rest of this game. And if you get through it physically and you get a couple of wins, yeah, yeah. no way it doesn't make you better. Yeah, it is so hard to win at this level, and you get one win and you feel good about it. But uh, uh, at Kansas State and then at Montana to open up this <laughs> year for the Coyotes. Sorry, Jay's got a chat with uh, one of the rising stars for the Coyotes, linebacker Brock Mogensen. That's coming up a little bit later, but when we come back, we will take a look at the 2022 USD Coyote defense. Thanks for watching Benchwarmers, presented by Avera Orthopedics. Welcome back to Bench Warmers, talking University of South Dakota college football this year with Jay Elson and uh, John Thayer, the radio voice of the Coyotes. Let's talk about the USD defense, top five in the Missouri Valley and a lot of the uh, the categories you want to be in, the rush defense and the opponent scoring, but some of the strengths you thought of the uh, USD defense from last season. From last season, definitely uh, it was the linebacker group. I mean, they really got after it, and that was a big part of their success. And we also saw some real talent at the kind of the rush end and, and really that whole defensive line. I thought um, those two areas really set this team up for success. You'd get some guys getting off the ball on the line. It allowed the linebackers to fill the, the spots and get up there. It was big part of their run defense success and those guys on the D line they can't be you know selfish guys you got to fill up some blocks and get in there and get after it I thought um, really those two groups showed a lot uh, last year yeah and I think the other thing just in general is you consider how the defense performed I think it was that rush defense because USD had this kind of unfortunate history of getting eaten alive on the ground by some teams and in a power league like the Missouri Valley Football Conference you have to be able to stand up and, and stop another team's running game. And, and they had really struggled to do that with any kind of consistency over the last several years. And, and, and I think last year, they finally got to that point where they were, they were pretty stout and they were at least forcing some teams to throw the ball. Now, one of the big keys is, you know, obviously a, a better defensive line. That was a huge part of it. You saw Nick Gaze there a couple of times, you know, getting after the quarterback. That certainly helps, too, as John said. They're commanding much more attention, freeing up those linebackers and allowing them to just go get after the football. And so that was a huge part of it, too. You know, question mark still being a little bit of the depth concern that they've had recently. And, and, and I think we saw that as the season wore on. The grind of the Missouri Valley Football Conference cost them a couple of key guys, and that defense wasn't quite as stout down the stretch. But overall, marked improvement across the board from that unit as a whole. Nick Gaze, as you said, there had seven sacks. He was like yeah. sixth in the Valley last year uh, getting after the quarterback. But maybe something that you would like to see improve a little bit defensively. Well, I think one thing that one area that has been a constant improvement that you need to see more out of is the uh, secondary on the defense. Yeah. I think right now there's some unknown on the defensive line with some of the guys that they lost last year. And you talk about some of those key pieces like Nick Gaze, but um, other guys will step in. But I think the secondary, the depth in the secondary has kind of been lacking. And we've seen the good news is we saw a lot of guys get game experience last year. We saw some young guys step up and be good. Tevin McKelvey, Josiah Gaines. We saw yeah. really good things 
out of those guys. Uh, new guys like De'Ron McKinney. Yeah. And uh, you just look at how all of that progressed. There's some talent there. How is the depth? That'll be a question yeah. for me going into the fall. Uh, the depth in the secondary is going to be critical to this team's success. Well, we talk a lot about Jack Cochran and, and what he meant to the middle of that defense. On the back side of that defense, you lose a guy with a ton of experience in E.J. Reed, so that's a huge hole to fill. But, yeah, depth for me is, is one of the biggest concerns. I would put it all across the board, but particularly in that secondary. I think right now you look at that top group of USD defensive backs – Probably as many playmakers, really legitimate playmakers as they've had at the Division I level um, in that group. But still, what you need to do is close the gap between the next group and those guys. And that's what they've struggled to do or struggled to maintain. And part of that just is guys being forced onto the field before they're actually ready. And that's because some of those top guys have been getting hurt. So, uh, you know, there's a, I, there's a lot of encouraging signs from what we saw last year in terms of that of that back end of the defense. But, but certainly depth. If you're going to look at one weakness, I think that's the first thing that comes to mind. Cochran was the ultimate playmaker. Jack oh. Cochran graduates as one of the best USD linebackers ever. He's now a free agent with the uh, Kansas City Chiefs getting a shot in the NFL, and he's, he's got the ability – to maybe stick in Kansas City, right? Yeah, I think he's got a chance to really be a, a, a key special teams guy in, in the NFL, especially early, early in his career. And, you know, he just reported to um, their training camp last week, and uh, he's getting his chance to prove it now, right? He had a chance in the rookie mini camps to go through some things, learn some things, but just his speed, his size, he'll have a chance to be in uh, special teams there, and, and uh, it'll be great for him. He's a phenomenal young man. He's obviously a, a great football player but just a really good down-to-earth guy and you love seeing guys like that have a chance to succeed and I think that's what really stood out about Jack I mean you know yes he did what he did between the lines he was a top-notch playmaker from a really important spot on the field um, but he brought so much more to that program you know whether it was in the weight room just being in terms of leadership things like that I mean Jack did it all the right way from the from the time he burned his red shirt as a true freshman to the time he left campus after last fall. So this is a guy like John said, you you really you, you really root for guys like this to succeed. I think he landed in a great spot in in uh, you know with a chance to really learn some things and get an opportunity maybe on special teams and eventually work his way into a bigger role. We've seen some other Valley guys do that here lately. Uh, even you know winning Super Bowl, Super Bowls with with the Rams with Christian Rosebaum. So. Um, you know, Jack could be the next guy that does it that way. And it's a little bit longer road, but certainly a guy that, that is always going to go about his business the right way and earn whatever opportunity he gets. And I do think we'll see the leadership you talk about. That'll pay dividends for this year's linebacker group, not Absolutely. only with Brock Mogensen, but the other guys. We saw uh, good things out of Trey Thomas, Stephen Hillis, Austin Rosetta. They all learned from Jack Cochran. I yeah. think we'll see that pay off this year. Brock Mogensen, another guy that's probably going to step into that role. And uh, when we come back, Jay, we'll have a little chat with the, the linebacker for the Coyotes, Brock Mogensen. Hey, welcome back to Bench Warmers and that U.S. defense. Lots improved a year ago. And one of the guys is going to be manning the middle for the Coyotes this fall is Brock Mogensen. And Brock joins us now. Brock, uh, thanks for, for jumping on with us here. The, the, the thing I want to start with you here is you're kind of a guy that's taken over a new role, trying to, trying to fill some big shoes in the guy that you played alongside the last few years in Jack Cochran. What's that like to just, just be grabbing on and knowing that you're kind of the new quarterback of this defense at this point? Yeah, thanks for having me on. Um, playing with Jack was an op awesome opportunity for me. Um, he knew the game inside and out. He was a great um, great coach on the field for us. It was kind of like playing next to another coach, but he was a very intelligent player, loved the game, and it was an op awesome opportunity to play with a NFL linebacker now. Yeah, what's the biggest lesson that you get? Obviously, when, you, when you're – you're lining up alongside a guy like that or watching him in the film room, uh, you know, the different things that he did to become that guy. What was your biggest takeaway from that experience? Um, his work ethic, definitely in the offseason, um, just changing his body every year. His body just seemed to ne never be the same. He always improved his body and his time in the film room. Um, great student of the game. It was awesome having him and be able to go to his house and watch film and learn from him, learn different techniques and learn cues from the offense that if you can see what play they're going to do, um, he would tell us. So that was pretty nice having him. 
Uh, let's take a look at, at this defense that you've got. Obviously, some big holes to fill, and, and Jack being at the top of that list, but Devlon Whitcomb is gone. Jake Matthew is gone. EJ Reed is gone. That being said, though, Brock, you guys do have a lot of a talent coming back and a, and a lot of guys that gained some really valuable experience last year, plus a few additions via the transfer portal. So as you consider this whole group this year, is there anything that's specific that stands out to you about it? Um, no, like you said, um, we've got a lot of great guys in the transfer portal coming to play and fill those positions. And we even have – they've been becoming leaders. And especially at the safety position, we got Isaiah McDaniels back there leading them. So – um, I think it'll. we're going to put guys in great spots to make plays, and that's what we're going to do. So what are some of the keys then, Brock, to continuing the progress that you guys started last year? Because this was a much improved unit uh, under Travis Johans Johansson last year. How do you keep it moving in the right direction, knowing all those things, that new pieces you've got to balance? Uh, yeah, guys are going to have to learn quick, um, being guys that haven't played much, got many snaps, so... We're going to have to learn quick and just keep competing, keep competing with our offense. Our offense is very good right now. Um, so in fall camp, we're going to have to compete with them and continue to learn our defense. Um, those young guys that we got coming up, they'll be great for us. Um, so the main thing is just keep learning, keep competing. All right, Brock, looking forward to seeing you back out there this fall. And I know you're excited that that whole group has to be. And some of the guys that, are, that were dinged up toward the end of last year have to be really uh, amped up as well. But thanks so much for taking a little time with us here today. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, Brock Mogensen, linebacker at the University of South Dakota. We're going to focus on the other side of the football when we come back. Carson Camp and that coyote offense should be awfully dangerous again this fall. That's coming up next here on Benchwarmers. Benchwarmers on Midco Sports, presented by Avera Orthopedics. All right, welcome back. Uh, more University of South Dakota football with uh, Jay and John. Let's talk about the offense. And unfortunately, they're going to be missing what was a big piece of the offense last year in Nate Thomas. What's going on? Yeah, Nate Thomas suffered a, a knee injury in the spring, and this was a guy who throughout the course of last year, we really saw his ability start to shine, and um, he started to take the game personal. Uh, this guy had four games last year where he rushed for at least 90 yards, two 100-yard games. He was averaging over six yards a carry, and after the playoff loss to Southern Illinois, he sat in the stands for at least an hour after the game just looking at the field. And I know this is a young man who soaks all of that in. He was fired up, you know, to, to keep things rolling and unfortunately suffered that injury this spring. But uh, I did talk to him in the spring after that injury, and he said, I'm good, though. I'll be back. I'll be fine. And, and you, you appreciate a guy like that who's in good spirits going through a tough time. Well, you talk about guys that, that come out of nowhere. I mean, this is a walk-on running back at the Division One level. You don't see walk-on running backs a whole lot getting an opportunity in their first year in a program, and Nate Thomas earned his, unfortunately, through in, an injury to Shamari Lawrence. After that injury for, for Shamari at Missouri State, that's when Nate Thomas started to work his way into the rotation a little bit. And, boy, talk about taking it and running with it literally that this is a guy that he runs as violently as physically as any guy I've seen at USD to this point Travis Tice is another guy that does it too but um, he was really really entertaining so definitely you know feel for him and feel for that offense to lose a guy of that caliber especially at a time of year where you're not playing on Saturdays yeah, yeah. that's always frustrating and too. you, you kind of touched on the two guys that are probably going to step in there now that Thomas is out right? well the good news is the cover's not bare Travis uh. Tice is an absolute beast this guy runs with authority he had a couple of hundred yard games last year and then Shamari Lawrence coming off his injury he was averaging 4.8 yards per carry yeah. at the time of his injury he was figuring things out but don't sleep on Mike Manzray the guy ran for 141 yards at Cal Poly on 21 carries he can flat out run the Football. So I, the cupboard's not bare. Guys got to step up, and they will because this is uh, last year they used four different running backs. That means you can't take a play off, and, yeah. and uh, these guys are going to be ready. And Shamari Lawrence, man, he's going to be ready to get after it. Yeah, I think he's really excited to get back out there. And, and you mentioned Manseray, and that's a guy that had a really good spring, too. He was one of the first guys that got brought up to me after I asked about who's been standing out. Mike Manseray's real, like his vision has improved. He's running the ball with more confidence and things like that. That's all great part of the recipe to be a successful running back at the division one level and so he's got all the talent there he just needed some of the other pieces to come together for him and that has started to happen and then 
they've added a couple of pieces since then, too, that could factor into that mix as the season goes on. You never know. There's a couple of young guys coming in that could be become part of the rotation. But I think you need to talk about Dante Warren and the job that he has done, the former quarterback, as a running backs coach at his alma mater. Uh, he is very, very highly regarded on, regarded on that coaching staff. And, and I think uh, his effectiveness – really showed through with the success of that group overall last year. And all those guys around Carson Camp, who had a really good freshman year last year, 17 yep. touchdowns, uh, just seven picks. They didn't throw it a ton, but uh, he was really efficient last year. Well, and I think part of it with him is needing to heal up after that injury, too, and they'll throw the ball around a lot more. I think what you love about Carson Camp is how much time he spends trying to learn the game, watching film with Ted Schlafke and things like that. This guy's committed to being the best that he can, and uh, that's why you continue to see him improve. He's got, a, he's got the ability to potentially at some point in his career, sooner than later probably, to be one of, if not the best quarterbacks in the Missouri Valley Football Conference. He's that talented, and he's doing things at a higher level than his grade would indicate at this point, or his class would indicate at this point. But he's got all the tools. He's got the right kind of work ethic, the right kind of demeanor uh, in terms of his mental makeup. Um, and, you know, it doesn't get a whole lot bigger than this right here, right? Um, you know, I... It, it was it was something to watch that guy go about his business last year, and he's only going to go up from here. Hopefully he's able to stay healthy. Uh, but they've added to that room as well to, to, to bring in a little bit more competition for him just to try to keep him moving forward. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. And we got that play in there twice in this show. So <laughs> September 3rd at Kansas State, Johnny Thayer will have all the games for the Coyotes uh, this year on the radio. Again, uh, Jay Elson will cover the Oats Force here on Midco Sports. Thanks, fellas. All right, a peek ahead to next week here on Bench Warmers when we come back. Our thanks again to Avera Orthopedics. We've got more college football coming up next week on Bench Warmers, where Ian Sean steps in with a look ahead to the season at the University of North Dakota.